Welcome to another oh. episode of Friday Night Live, coming to the you. The best show on the internet. From the underground, whatever yeah. that means. But uh, we talk about. I all think we're all that. underground. I am. I'm in the basement right now. Yeah, that is, me too. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, <laughs> but we talk about all things attention, getting attention to your mission movement and your um, uh, mission movement. And your message. Message in a uh, incredibly noisy marketplace. So today we're talking all things networking. That is the the big topic of today. How networking has changed my life. How uh, it's changed Molly's life. And I know it's changed Lefty's life. Richard, I can only assume that it's changed your life. But the thing is, is there's good networking and there's, in my opinion, time wasting networking. Yeah time sucker. And where do we draw the line? Where do we say, okay, I'm going into this with a goal. And it doesn't have to be a monetary goal. And it really, it shouldn't forming a new relationship. It shouldn't be monetary first. It should be value first. And how do you do those outreaches to where they are considered genuine, real, not looking for money? And yes, of course, down the line, you'll want to do business together, but it starts here, right? Yeah. So now, how do we determine if we go into, you know, there's lots of these programs like VDP, virtual dinner party, uh, dinner, a lot of them are uh, same premise. VDP does a pretty good job at networking people with a purpose, but there's a lot of those that are time wasters, huge mm -hmm. time sucks. And it's generally people that all want money and they want it right yesterday. <laughs> well, <laughs> my God. Yep. And they, it sucks. It sucks because everyone you talk to is hard pitching right out the gate. It's just like in your inbox, uh, your mess messenger inbox, when you get uh, the message that's like, oh, I like to cut right to the chase. I am a part of a group of performance-based uh, appointment setters. Yeah. <laughs> and I just go, I like to cut to the chase too. No. <laughs> I respect that. No. Yeah. Um, so how do we avoid that? We don't want to be perceived that way. And we definitely don't want to be putting that out into the world like, Hey, if you connect with me, I don't want to be your friend. I'm waiting for the check. Yeah. I, I I don't like it. And I definitely don't want to be perceived as being that person in the open market. So today, this is our discussion. And we're going to go around and talk with each person about how networking has affected their life. And I want to hear from you. Yeah, how you. Networking affected your life. Have you gone to a time suck? Have you gone and just, just been like, man, I can't ever get this time back ever. And meanwhile, <laughs> someone's like, Hey, all right. And uh, I've got a, a appointment setters and uh, we can help you out with your funnels. <laughs> and they're like shaking because they're just waiting for someone to say, yes, it's the law of numbers. Or have you been to effective networking to where it actually helped you help them it formed a real relationship and you guys look out for each other entrepreneurship can be extremely 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 lonely yeah and uh we got to support each other no one else is lining up to do it so if we go into it with that perspective i feel like we can get much more out of it right 100 percent. so molly i'd love for you to talk about the book you're reading Oh, and man. I'd okay. love to hear about how networking has affected your life because I know it has in a big way. You know me. I always got to start with a backstory, right? Get so him. one person who in the last couple years in my entrepreneurial journey really stood out in the way that they connected with people, whether it was people who were just commenting on their show or it was people who were clients or prospective clients or just other people within the ecosystem or in other coaching programs that they were also students in. They're, they had this incredible ability of making you feel comfortable, at ease, and starting a conversation that 
most likely had nothing to do with business at first. And I thought this was really intriguing. Um, and the person I'm talking about, for those of you who are curious, is the one and only McCall Jones from Charisma Hacking. Um, and I was like, maybe this is just a, like, a charisma hacking thing. But no, I asked her straight up for any kinds of recommendations. And she said that the number one book that she recommends is Never Eat Alone. So the thing about this is this book was like $50 Canadian for a, like a year. And I was like... Mm, I'm not in that's university a lot of money anymore. For Canadians. So, exactly. I'm like, that's a that's lot like of money. That's like a million normal dollars. Yeah. We could buy like five American <laughs> houses with that. <laughs> Besides the point. Um, and so so it's been in my Amazon cart and my wish list. And every time I make an order, I check the price and it always seems to go up, 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 up. And then it dropped in price and immediately I hit the buy button. It arrived and it sat on my desk for like a month. And I was like, oh, it's a, it's a big, like it's 400 and something pages. It's a big book. And I was like, maybe, maybe I'll start it. And I was going to read one chapter a day and I read the first seven chapters in the first day. Um, and I'm obsessed. Overshot at a touch. <laughs> obsessed. So I want every single one of you to read this book. Okay. He went to like the author went to like Harvard Business School. So we know he knows what he's talking about. The first section of the book is all about mindset and not mindset in the woo woo way, but mindset in the way of understanding your intention when you go into a networking event, when you go in to connecting with people, whether it's online or it's in conferences like funnel hacking live, wink, wink, nudge, nudge or whatever you're doing to make connections with people. And it's understanding that we're not going in there for the hard sell, like Jim was just talking about. It's like such common sense, but for some reason we automatically get into that state when we're, when we're entrepreneurs. We're like, okay, I'm here, I have goals, I, I'm goal oriented, I have to go achieve those. And that means I need to meet with a hundred new people and make 500 new best friends and then sell 600 things and make a million dollars in the weekend. And that's not realistic. And we also know one of our favorite people here on the show, the one and only Christopher Voss, who focuses on relationship marketing and really connecting and networking with people in a way that is meaningful and intentional. And so combining all of those together, I, I thought talking about connecting and networking would be a perfect thing to talk about. So if you want to follow along with um, the rest of the book, so I started with the mindset part. I'm now on the, like, how do we actually do it techniques? Each chapter um, that I'm about to do for the next week or so is, oh, there's, okay, you guys have to get this book because there is an entire chapter called The Networking Jerk, because we all know The Networking Jerk. Um, <laughs> I have this this amazing colleague who who has this skill set when it comes to conferences and networking at conferences they barely ever attend the sessions or at least i don't think they attend the sessions i think they stand outside in the hallway and really make time to connect with people um, and they'll come back from these conferences with a pile of business cards um, and what's cool is like yeah okay we've made those connections we have all these great business cards but we don't follow up on those um, and that's where the, where this colleague of mine loses um, in this equation. So my friends, don't be a networking jerk, tip number one. Tip number two, connect to genuinely connect. And tip number three is make sure you follow up with people. Um, and we can talk about tons of different ways to follow up, but I will tell you about how, um, how networking and connecting with people changed everything for my own business. Two stories. Quick, story, quick shout story, outs real quick. Oh, to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. people watching. Uh, Yolanda, thank you so much for joining us. Matt Johnson is watching, and we've got Nicholas Pylon and Amazing Marson, who is also going to be at Funnel Hacking Live. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We do have the link available in the comments if you guys would like to actually join us live and contribute in that way. Otherwise, enjoy the show, leave comments where applicable, and ask all your questions because we are here to help you. 100%. 
So mm -hmm. the first quick story about networking and how it changed my business was, um, well, this show right here. Um, this show actually came out. We'll tell you more about this um, next week, but you'll have to tune in for that. But long story short, this show came out of another show that Jim and I did. Um, and that show was entirely based on a flying by the seat of our pants and b trying to connect with as many people as we could during a very short period of time like a four day period of time at a stupid obnoxious morning slot it wasn't a friday night show it was a morning show but the people we were able to connect with because we built ourselves this platform we gave ourselves the opportunity the invitation to invite all of these people to our show and we had this one conversation I will never forget um, with Mark Stern, who had just gotten his Two Comma Club Award um, at Funnel Hacking Live. He is doing incredible things in the business world. Um, and it was kind of an awe, awe-inspiring moment for me. I was like, no way, we're talking to this guy? I I have this guy's stuff all over. Like, his, his boxes are down and like, I have I love Mark Stern's stuff. And he was there on the show, just shooting the shit, just having a laugh with us. And from then on, I've continued to, to keep in touch with Mark. And I am so excited I get to meet him in person to, to take this online connection and take it to another in-person level. Um, and that is the power of just creating a space. We didn't create a space to ask people to pitch to us or for us to pitch to them. We just created a space where people can connect. And that, I think, on an individual level, incredible. Um, on a money level, because everyone wants to talk about money, I saw a lot of you new people and your reasons for wanting to join our group, whether you want new leads in your business or some of you, there's a couple of you, the new people who just joined today in the group. There's a couple of you, I love you deeply in my heart. You said that the reason you wanted to join this group and become a visibility hacker is simply one word, money. Some people got a little bit more more expansive and they said more money. And someone <laughs> even said lots more money. And so let's talk to those people for a second. When you network with the right people, it can absolutely change the game for your business. So I, I get nervous networking in person. It's just part of my personality. So I, I do things to help me deal with that. Um, but I found myself about... I guess it'd be two years now at this networking event that just, I felt so out of place, but I was there supporting someone else um, in an industry that was kind of tangential to what I do and no, 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 I kind of fit in, but I felt the imposter syndrome. And I just said to myself, I literally went to the bathroom. I looked myself in the mirror. I splashed some cold water on my face and I said, Molly, smarten up. You're a smart girl. You got good things to say, but it's not about you tonight. I want you to turn the mirror on the people you're talking to. Because that way, you don't have to be nervous about what you're doing. You don't have to worry about having an elevator pitch because you're just going to turn the mirror on the person you're talking to. You're going to get to know what they have to say. And so, long story short, ended up connecting with some people who helped me connect to some other people who helped me connect to some other people. And bam, like three months later, $1.3 million in sales. Boom simply because I had one conversation with one person at one networking event and I asked the right questions. And it was a wonderful thing. It'll change everything. Drop the metaphorical say. mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> careful, man. Those things are expensive. So I'm sure you asked dozens of questions, but for those of you that want to know the right question, could you give us one question in particular that you think was the game there is only one question you should be asking okay like of course get to know people like be conversational but the biggest thing i would say is go in knowing not hmm, reverse don't go in with a prepared elevator speech kind of i'm a robot i have to say this because it's part of my yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you want to know 
very clearly what you want to achieve. And I don't mean this in like, in this networking event, I want to achieve 600 new friends. It's <laughs> in your mission in life, whether it's your business or whatever, what is it that you are, are, are working towards? I really want to show the world that small businesses are the future of business. I, I am so adamantly, that is my, my mission in life. And so I talk to people about that. When people ask, oh, what do you do? Well, I talk about the big mission. I don't talk about the, oh, I build shows. I talk about the big mission. And then I ask people what, what their mission is. And so we're now talking about something more substantive, something bigger. We can have a conversation about values. I can get really nerdy about talking about shared values, but today's not the episode for that. But yeah. once you understand that people are both, like Jim and I, for example, we hit it off instantly when we both realized that we had those shared values. We were both working towards the exact same vision of the future. And so from that, the next question you want to ask is, do you know anyone that could help me with that? Do you know anyone who would be, who, who could... You know, maybe your, your mission is to um, be, maybe you're really specific about your goal. And I worked with a client who really wanted to be a TEDx speaker. That was her goal. And so every networking event she'd go to, whether she was there by herself or she had a wingman who would help introduce that topic into conversation, it was, I really want to speak on stages. I, I want to be a TEDx speaker. I am so passionate about this. Do you know anyone that could help me with that? And it's incredible when you build connections with people on the basis of shared values rather than, oh, this is what I do for business. What do you do for business? Thanks for sharing. Uh, you're able to build connections with people and they see you as a person rather than just another business transaction. We as humans, the way that our brains are wired, when we see people who are trying to sell to us, we get red flags in our brains and their brains say, cautious, be careful. Um, approach with caution, be, be weary. Mm. When someone's connecting to us human to human about shared interests or shared worries or, or things like that, those red flags don't go up. We, we're able to actually hear each other better. We're better able to understand each other. And then because of that, we don't feel threatened at all. We feel like you are part of what um, Simon Sinek calls your circle of safety. And when you step into that circle of safety, that way that your brain is wired absolutely changes. So easiest way to understand this, we as, we as humans are a communal animal. So our brain chemistry can be in, let's make this super basic, two different states. You can either be in the state where you are in fight or flight. Think cavemen. Yeah. You're being chased by animals. You are chasing prey. You are weary and worried. If your community, for example, or say you don't have a community, you're just out in the wild, everything is a threat. Everything has to be processed through that lens in our brain. But if we flip to the other option for our brain, when we feel safe, when we feel secure within our communities, secure within our work teams, secure within our own business, for example, we're actually changing how our brains process information. We can then use way more of our brain power and energy to focus on being creative and coming up with better solutions rather than always being like, ha ha ha. So long story short, connect with people on, the, on shared values and interests and then ask them how or whether or not they have people who can help get them to the right place that you want to be set really good goals yeah. and then share it with people that's my info i love it i absolutely <laughs> love it i actually found out some uh since we are on the topic you know the overall general topic of, of visibility i found out some pretty interesting information today that is probably going to be a huge game changer uh Do share and, and shared interest share <laughs> okay okay um number one instagram has gone from their typical everyday instagram like we know them to a recommendation platform based on viewership mm -hmm. which means that 
your reach is going to be determined based on how long you can keep someone watching your videos and how often. So mm -hmm. for those of you that don't understand what I'm talking about, it's called YouTube. You get views based on watch time, essentially. So yeah. now Instagram is following the model of, of YouTube and they've made that change. So <clears throat> this can either hurt creators or give creators a really awesome fighting chance. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing and we can touch base on it more. The second thing is I found out a certain little platform is in real neck to neck competition with another certain little platform. Okay. I found mm -hmm. out that TikTok is going to announce in the weeks or months to come that you will now be able to upload videos up to 10 minutes specifically to try and kill YouTube. Good Be luck. Hmm? Good luck. Reason being... They'll make a dent. They will. They'll make a dent. They'll make a dent because the people are already getting bigger reach on TikTok than they do with YouTube. And quicker. Interesting. So that are those are those are the, the, the two big things that I that I found out. <laughs> and to add a little tip, to add a little a little uh, sales tip, I guess. Um, one thing that we all bypass and it happens every day. And Molly, you mentioned that people were, you know, coming into the group and saying, I want more leads, I want more this, I want more that. Guys, you know, guys and girls, you know what you're dismissing on a daily basis? On Instagram, you get likes every day. Guess what those likes are? Those likes are warm leads. And if you have 400 likes on a video or a post or, or anything that you did, you can go into that and literally start siphoning through. Maybe... 400 people turn into 75 people that are your target audience. Maybe the 75 turn into 20 that book a call. Maybe the 20 turn into five that actually book with you. Based on your prices, I'm sure that's a very good month for that specific individual. So stop dismissing off of one the video. Off of one video. So stop dismissing the likes. Stop just being like, Oh, that's cool. I got 300 likes on that photo or I got 300 or a thousand likes on that video and just look at it as a like. Start redirecting your brain to look at a thousand likes as a thousand warm leads and you will see how much more you're going to start filling up your calendar. Absolutely. All right. I want to do a quick call back. Um, Yolanda says her mission is to help as many people as she can, but I want to challenge this. I want to say, let's make this more specific because that's a really, that's great intention and that'll help you connect with people maybe at a very surface level, but it still doesn't tell us what you're doing or who those people are. And I know we've talked about this before. We know that you're looking at a ver at helping people, helping a specific group of people with a specific issue with a specific access issue. Um, so I challenge you, Yolanda, to get more specific about that. Your mission is to help as many who as possible with what. That is, that is my challenge to you, to get a little bit more specific. So when you walk into that room, I know you have that confidence. I know you have that passion behind what you're doing. I clearly have seen that over the last couple of weeks. But what I want you to do is be able to say that confidently and clearly in a cohesive way every time you meet new people. One sentence. I want to help as many people access legal resources as possible because you can even add the because um, and then start to talk about why it matters to you. So that's my challenge to you. Heck yeah. Let us know if you, uh, if you come up with some great ideas. The very first conference I ever went to was a stock trading conference. Oh, and yeah, 
Hey, Jim, you want to do some day trading there, bud? <laughs> you shut your lips. Yo, man, I got these great tips. How about that? Let me tell you. So the very first one I ever went to was that. And they were handing out these to everybody <laughs> there. $50 trillion from the Bank of Zimbabwe. $50 trillion. And everyone was Google really search excited. Friends? Everyone got really excited, like, oh, man, this is going to be amazing. And then they're like, yeah, everyone gets one just for showing up to the conference. And I'm sitting there with this thing in my hand, and I'm like, oh, this is really cool. I wonder how much it's worth. And he goes, don't get too excited. It's worth about 14 cents. <laughs> 50 trillion Zimbabwean dollars, which now it's worth about fifty dollars. They don't use this anymore. They use Australian currency now because their currency fell apart. It's worth about fifty bucks now on eBay. But I've kept it all these years and I use it to relate to connection. Is mm. that we feel like we're giving you fifty trillion worth of value by just knowing what we do and how we can serve you. When in reality, it's worth about 14 cents and you're wasting their time. <laughs> it's the reality of it. So I've kept it all these years just to remind me that perception is not always reality. Yep. <laughs> so yep. $50 trillion, 14 next, cents at the time. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, you get a $50 trillion bill, know your geography. <laughs> know your geography, yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I started out um, networking at all these events. I went to lots of events. Uh, what got me into entrepreneurship was really hustling my block for landscaping and all sorts of stuff. People just kept giving me money to do stuff. And I was like, sweet, I like money. I want more of that. So I just kept <laughs> doing more and more cleaning gutters and cleaning out uh, summer cleanup. I cleaned out a lady's basement. I cleaned out someone's garage uh did snow removal all those things that you can do i took took out trash for two bucks a week you know like anything i could do i did it and that's when i got the bug because my family definitely does not have the entrepreneurship bug. they're like i want someone to take care of me give me my retirement and then you can f off because i'm going to florida baby <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's the way they see it and I've just never seen it that way. I'm just like, that doesn't sound great at all. I want to make jobs. I want to create something. So whenever I'd run into people, I used, without even trying, just genuine curiosity. And I just wanted to know what they do and how they do it. You know, like from uh, that Will Smith movie, what do you do and how do you do it? When he saw the guy with the Ferrari, right? Mm -hmm. So... I think that my genuine curiosity has gone a long way for me because it's not me talking about me. I'm talking about what they love to talk about the most. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And it's served me very well to have a genuine childlike curiosity mm -hmm. about other people and what makes them tick. And John knows this. I talk about this mm -hmm. all the time. What's their why? What's their why? What's, What's the their why? why? Because it could be authority, it could be money, it could be uh, it could be more attracting money. the opposite sex. It could be uh, well. Status. I I was working I was working with someone recently, and we talked about their why, and their why was because they wanted to be able to get their dad into a retirement home that was closer to where they lived. So I now, never if you're would have known that, that without person, asking the right question. And you're just talking about make more money. Return on investment, money, 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 money. It's just <laughs> blowing past them. It's not what they care about. So I always want to know someone's why. Because then you can get into what really matters to them. And notice I'm not talking about anything to this point about me or my wallet or my bank account. Because it doesn't matter right now. It just doesn't. It's all about them and how I can supply them with some kind of value or just make a friendship that actually means something is tangible is they, they know that they can lean on me if they need me for something. Lean if they on. have a question or if they just want to get something off their chest, they can call me and I make that known. 
and it served me extremely well. And then I get into COVID times, and I decided to start this show, X's and O's. And so the first show was my family. And it was my mom. My mom stood up in the middle of the first episode and showed her butt to everybody. <laughs> and she's wearing this ridiculous damn gardening hat that look, makes her look like uh, Grant from Jurassic Park. <laughs> and the whole thing was an absolute hilarious shit show. I watched it recently, actually, and I laughed my butt off. But during the show, I was terrified mm -hmm. because I'm thinking no one's going to watch this. Nothing worked the way I wanted it to. But in reality, everyone was like, this was amazing. Don't ever stop. <laughs> so what I thought was horrific to other people was like genuine entertainment. But my second show, I reached out to Marley Jacks. So talking about networking, I had already done an hour session with her. I paid for an hour of her time to look over my ideas and my concepts and for her to tell me if it was good or if it sucked. And so she I, she knew I existed on the planet, but she was really the only one that knew anything about me other than Billy Jean is marketing Billy Jean um, because I had been digging into his content. So I asked her, I was like, hey, I got this weird, weird show that I just made in like a fever dream. And I'd love for you to be on it. And she goes, can you send me an example? And I sent her the dumpster fire that was episode one of my family and my mom <laughs> showing her butt. And she was like, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in. And she goes, but can I bring a friend? It's like, yeah, you're Molly Jacks. You bring whoever the hell you want. You bring a whole family if you want, bring half of Canada. So she, <laughs> she goes and she brings her friend who also happened to be a, a high seven figure earner in the click funnel space. So now I've got two big names in click funnel space and I fill the rest of the show in the next two hours, which there was 12 people on the show, including me, 11 other than myself, which is a lot logistically speaking week to week to get everyone in the same place on the same page, knowing what they're doing is it's a lot. And two and a half hours, I had the show filled because I said, Marley and this other person are coming on. Are you? So now I'm not selling me. I'm selling relation to me. Yeah. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. you. So now if they look up to Marley in any respect, they are jumping over each other to be on the show that they didn't even know existed until I messaged them. And now I'm getting messages of like, how long has the show been around? How did you get Marley? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, check out the show and find out. I never talked about it, but they showed up. <laughs> <laughs> they showed up to the show and they got to liking it and it got to have its own like personality and stuff. So the next episode, guess what I did? We had these five amazing people show up. You want to come on? And I just kept leveraging my last win, snowballing my wins. Yeah getting to higher and higher ranks until I had people that were eight, nine figure people that were coming on the show. Yeah. People that I never thought would be even remotely feasible to ask to come on my ridiculous, like straight up theft of Hollywood squares. <laughs> <laughs> it was theft. And uh, they came on and it was because others came before them. I didn't make them first. Yeah. Yeah, no one wants to be first. The first ones in war are the ones that get knocked off. So if you are wanting to have people join whatever you have, your service, your product, your your movement, don't make them first. Let them know others have come before you and it's safe to proceed. That's yeah. it. That's why testimonials, case studies are so critical. They are gold absolute yeah. gold because you're letting people know this is a safe thing to endeavor in this is a safe purchase to make i know i'm going to get out of it what is being prescribed just knock out your circle first and you knock out your circle first yeah i mean that's right i mean you start where you are yeah you start where you are and then you do these little outreaches i reached out to marley because i was like what do i have to lose you just say no i'm right where i am now there is zero to lose yeah 
And I put myself up against the wall because I set a day and a time and I told everyone where to be and I had no one coming on the show. So I had to fill the show out of a, a, a need because I felt like I was going to let people down if I didn't. And that's my personality type. I need to be pushed into a corner where I have to fight or flight. And when I do that, I fight. So as long as I put myself in that position, shit gets done. And I did. I put myself in that corner and I delivered. And it kept growing from there. And that's the whole reason I exist on this internet platform. That's the whole reason I've gotten to know everyone on this show for some reason or another. You know, Richard, I got to know through Doug Bouton. Doug Bouton, I got to know through the show. Yep. You know, Lefty, I got to know through uh, Jay Lee. Jay Lee, I got to know from somebody else that was on the show. John <laughs> is not from the show. He's from my personal life. We're working together. But, but he also contributes to my shows. <laughs> <laughs> but you were doing a show. I was thinking about entrepreneurship. You and Molly watching you guys six, seven months. I'm like, wait a second. They said I can come on there? Okay, cool. So I come right. to the show one day, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm so excited. I'm here. Look at all these people. I'm excited. And I got some stories to tell you about this. But long story short, yes, the show. Connected and Molly the dots. was supposed to come on the show and never did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was because when you run a show that's that big – um sometimes there's miscommunication so oh yeah it was why... a shit show in the back end yeah. total shit but show like i'm like hey this i person so dropped out. wanted to now. be on your show <laughs> yeah. i was i would get these like frantic messages from some like uh mutual friends of ours who are like no matter how i was gonna why aren't you on the show where are you I'm like ah, i didn't know there was a show i thought it was in four hours <laughs> But things things it was coming go. Let's... It was me, and I had someone named Heather Murphy. Which Heather, if you are ever watching this, you are the most amazing person ever. Uh, I couldn't have done it without her. I did it without her, and it didn't work. <laughs> so she was the one that reached out, got new people interested, and then I would carry it across the finish line from there. But she was doing tremendous amounts of outreach, helping me out, managing people. If they had questions, she answered the questions, which people had a ton of questions. Um and uh she helped me to manage all that chaos but that was only when i got to you know people watching the show seven to ten thousand uh a week you know views a week that's when it became a thing that i needed to help manage but before that i could kind of like weasel my way through it stumble fumble make my mistakes and it was generally okay people were very understanding because it was something so new um but then heather came on and it was a tremendous help um and now she has her own movement brand muse shout out to brand muse she does some pretty incredible stuff with that um uh, well let's check in with yolanda yes because she's Yolanda's oh, an action taker. Right down. I like that. So we've narrowed down to help as many couples with children to gain access to legal services because everyone deserves to have equal access to justice. I yes. love that. There is passion behind Yolanda, that. There is mission awesome. behind that. There is clarity behind that. And that says the next sentence you have to say, Yolanda, is do you know anyone that could help me with this mission? Mm -hmm. That's that's it. You have it down. So, I love well that. done. Yeah, well done. Awesome. Pause there. You get fifty trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> right there. I I have currency from from so many countries who have had hyperinflation. Yeah. Um, I have like a wall of bills, uh, but they're upstairs, and I'm I'm too lazy to run upstairs. Valid. That's valid. <laughs> Proceed. So, <laughs> networking has show. been. There she is. Ah, you're totally getting crushed. When this bell goes off in this household, you know what that means? Someone made a Honey, sale. Somebody closed the deal, so I'm upstairs <laughs> cooking and yeah. I hear the bell. I'm like, hold on one second. <laughs> 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 because this is a serious thing here. So, 
Oh, oh nice that's so amazing. He was like, oh shit, money. And then apparently he was on the show. So, yeah, but you guys are doing an awesome job. I'm hearing it. I love it. Keep it up. Happy anniversary. You are amazing. And Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, too, coming up. Oh, yeah. Yes. All yes. right. It's the show anniversary. Show anniversary. Exactly. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, showing up at my crash party. Who knows? Please do. You're always welcome. This girl's ears, man. You can't get anything past her. I love it. <laughs> and she, for those she, like, watching, say? Say she heard $50 trillion dollars in the bell. He's like, oh, <laughs> Legitimately. <laughs> I was on a call with her, and I got to witness her sales experience. That girl kicks ass. Oh, appreciate you. She can tear it up. Appreciate Very I've nice. seen it in person at the gym. Yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen her walk people through that gym. Oh, you highlight the perfect things to highlight. I love it. Get them. I love it. It's my passion, but you guys are amazing. And I love that you're in our circle and, uh, you know, you guys are going to kill it. You have a great mind mentality, motivation. So we're all going to the top together. hundred percent. Okay. Peace. I got, I'm cooking. Listen out to that bell. <laughs> yeah. Hands off the bell for now, lefty. H hands off the bell. Hands now off the I got to get a bell. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I need a bell. All right, I'm going to make that happen. Uh, she's so funny. And yeah, and Mel, oh, Molly, thank you for the uh, the wishes. Our anniversary, four years married yesterday. Yeah, congrats. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, thank That's you. That's a Happy. connection. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I drank like a Canadian yesterday. I should not have done that. <laughs> it's okay. One pinky up? I forget how that works. No. All I know is that One I in each drank. end. One in yeah. each hand. All I know is that at 36, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I drink nowadays, and I pay. I just you might as well just take an X to one day on the calendar. And I don't even do it anymore. Honestly, I don't even do it anymore. I've kind of, I kind of started like ever since I started the the, the Craywood Left Daddy's brand, uh, mm -hmm. which pretty much started in December and launched in January. I cut it all out. Like, what's happening? Who is that? Time to wake up. It's magical. Yeah. <laughs> But but I cut it I cut I cut it all out I cut it all out It's kind of like it's kind of like the occasional beer once in a while But then it was like Fine, how yesterday are you? was a different story. <laughs> so Lefty, yeah, talk to me about some networking, man. How has it affected your life? What does it mean to you, and how do you approach it? I was like anybody. I had to learn. I, I had to learn that it was uh, about you, not about me, mm -hmm. right? Um, there, well, but one thing that I, that helped me in this whole entire process, oh. and, and, I, and I actually <laughs> learned this lesson from DJing, uh, because I was, uh, an events DJ. Now the lesson I learned and I was 18 years old and I remember I would, I was, I was there, I was playing, I was ready to rock that dance floor. And there was like five people on my floor. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm the worst DJ ever. I suck. Why did I even get involved in this industry? Yada, yada, yada. The next week I had another show. Guess what I did? Played the exact same set minus a few songs here and there. Packed floor, hundreds of people, okay? The moral of the story and how it ties back into the whole networking thing is don't kick yourself in the butt. Something goes wrong because you can't, you, you essentially can't win everybody over, right? Learn, learn that, you know, the people that want to be there and listen to you and hear you out and, and, and work with you are the ones that are going to be there. The ones that people that just don't want to dance, just don't want to dance. It's not anything that you're doing wrong. It's just them. You could play the hottest song in the world. Something that's top banger on the radio right now. Something by gonna... Yanni. Yeah. <laughs> Laurel. That shit's, fire. that shit's fire. But I learned that, but, but I learned, I learned that very quickly, right? Is just the fact that you can't win everybody over. And, yeah. and we all know that in the, 
pretty much world of like networking and sales and all that it is a lot of rinse and repeat i see richard right it, yeah. it, it, it is a lot of rin, rinse and repeat and because of the rinse and repeat you know you're gonna you, you fall into this segue of kind of saying the same things over and over and over again there's repetition so focus on the people that actually care to like be around you talk to you listen to you and you listen to them don't worry about the people that are just like oh my god you dm'd me i cannot believe you just sent me this right now <gasps> the the balls on you who how dare you dm me you know like f those people guys don't let those people like kill your positivity your creativity your your confidence because you don't want to work with those people anyways focus on the people where it's like it doesn't matter if it's midnight and you go hey what's up thanks for being a part of my network they're gonna be like f yeah thank you for messaging me love you love everything that you're doing those are the people that you want to be around and i kind of just shifted to focusing more on those people than the other ones that are just like oh, i'm appalled that you even dm'd me right now <laughs> <laughs> Richard, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to back up Lefty, and that is uh, if people, if you're ex being accepted or people's level of acceptance of you is so fragile that one mistake is going to uh, have them divorce you, then it's best that they be gone. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great way of putting it. Yeah, I like that. Different strokes for different folks, right? Like we said, like, what was what, 10 episodes ago where I talked about quiche isn't for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I was on I'm the show. I'm kind of like quiche. You either I love, love me or you're like, quiche isn't for me. I love quiche. I, I got excited <laughs> recently. Um, so I'm, I'm on this hunt to expand my YouTube subscriber base. I have a very lovely small channel, by the way. Um, but it's a great channel. Mm -hmm. I'm like... I'm like, every time I get one new subscriber, I pat myself on the back. I get so excited. I, I focus in on creating even better content, all of that stuff. But the times that people unsubscribe from me, let me ask you guys, how do you think I react? Do I get really excited or do I get upset with myself? Positive or negative reaction? What do you think I do? I think you burn things. <laughs> burn things? Yeah, you know me uh, well, man. <laughs> know me well just saying anyone else anyone got I want to say I want to say it's probably something that at the beginning of your journey probably bothered you quite a bit yeah. and now you're just learning to like not give enough no so here's the thing you're right on half of that I get more excited when people unsubscribe from me because every time that happens it's a sign that that was a person who pre-qualified themselves out they realized I wasn't their cup of tea, so they left. Imagine this. If you just collect people and you don't give them an exit, imagine the people who don't like your stuff. They're eventually going to start talking, and they're eventually going to start filling your comments with negative stuff. I would rather those people just move on, find something else that, that is better for their interests and better for their time so that the people who I'm creating content for really want to be there. So yeah. don't always think that people leaving your 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 bubble or leaving your community is a bad thing. Think That's of it bad. as one step closer to a more refined, connected community. Well, that so. was Molly's that. version of the dance floor right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. No, I love that. That's actually cool because I would have never thought of it that way because I, as I posted probably an hour ago, I'm starting a new YouTube channel again. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and like... I got I got a, I got to pay respects like YouTube actually kicked off my videography career. Yeah, so nice. the fact that I haven't done it in two years, it was almost like, oh, man, like, I, I think I got to do it again. And I just I got some like info and I got some info about YouTube and and it just like it's silly not not to do it again. Right. Um, and pretty much the info that I got is, which we all know, and for those that don't, it's fine, but I'll just touch on it. YouTube is, outside of Google, the fact that Google owns YouTube, is the largest search engine in the world. Yeah. You want to find anything, how to, why this, who that, when this, you're going to go to YouTube or you're going to go to Google. Yeah. And if you are not on 
YouTube and you go and do uh, a doctor Google search, you know, you're going to end up finding in the first two or three posts YouTube video recommendations. So no matter what, it Google is constantly siphoning you through uh, to YouTube. And I was like, huh, why didn't I think of this before? And Instagram is not a search engine, no. even though exactly. even though they're, they're 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 attempting to be now apparently, but TikTok's not a search engine. The, the, these platforms are not search engines, and it's like, what better way to find a lead or get a lead than through Google and YouTube? It's really a matter of videographers in my area all of a sudden one of lefties videos pop up, right? Yeah. So. And, and that's how I started to think of it. And I'm like, I need YouTube in my life again. So the short form Jedi is going to start creating long form content once again. All right. Yeah. yeah, I know it might surprise you guys, but I fixed my AC unit using YouTube last week. And it might be even more surprising that I'm not an air conditioning expert. So really? I, I fixed it with YouTube alone. I and I want to give a quick shout out to a new face here, Nick Pylon. What's up, man? I love hey, the background. I feel like it's like Starry Night meets Embers. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's, it's really cool, man. I really like that. And I got different I'm modes calming. too. Yeah, that's nice. Can do. Oh, Are those oh, Twinkies? Yeah. Yes. Dude. Nice. I swear by Killer. those. I am Killer. truly enjoying that. So did you make little holes in the, a black backdrop and just feed those puppies through? No, they're straight. Oh, they're dangling in front. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Smart Christmas I made light. A, I yeah, it's, a, it's like a wall. So I made a frame, and then it, it's gone to hinge. So then I can kind of position it. It's hanging on like fish wire. So I kind of, I love kind it, of made up my own you little wall. It. I think that's wall. sweet. Nice. <laughs> And your video Thanks. looks fantastic, by the way. Looking Thank really you. nice. Thank you. John will be very pleased about that. <laughs> I, I am very pleased about that, yeah. <laughs> and Lefty, of course. John, I'm yes. next. You are. You, listen, we're going to get you all. We're going to make you all have a starry night in your background. <laughs> yeah, man, we're, we're just going to straight up They're just going to call you Van Gogh. <laughs> Every single one of you will be Van Goghs. I I'm not giving it. you my ear. Like, I mean, I'll listen to you, but I'm keeping my ears attached. Just saying. <laughs> so, Nick, I'd love to hear your perspective on networking, man. What has it meant to you in your business? And, well, first off, we got to do a proper introduction. Nick, who are you and how do you serve <laughs> the the people, as they say? Um, well, I... I'm naturally a problem solver, so I find different ways in digital media to do that. Um, and that's what I enjoy the most. So um, I've always tried to drive away from corporate video as much as I can, um, just because I don't, you don't really solve problems. You kind of just are like the McDonald's worker of, of production, um, which can be a good way to learn some things. But um, it's not necessarily in my forte as far as like, you know, what I enjoy doing. And so, um, uh, but I've uh, had my own company, still do on the side. Um, and then I do, um, which pretty much doing whatever I want on that front. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also work full time right now at uh, on site at Dow Chemical, their studio there as a contractor nice. through Diversified is the company I work for. And um, yeah, so that's what I do right now. I work in their studio and I'm a production specialist there. Um, cool. but I would say, um, again, that's a little bit more corporate and, and it kind of, you know, pays the bills, but what I, yeah. where I want to go is definitely back into, uh, working with companies and businesses and people. And that's what I've been doing on the side. John and I have been doing that on the side together. Um, some of our, some of some of the projects I'm currently working on have been collaborative with him. Um, as my dp oh. so <laughs> yeah um but yeah so that's kind of what i'm doing now is, is that's the best way i can explain it is sort of a problem solving media guy um and uh and i have different skills as in editing video and all, all sorts of video productions um director of photography i've kind of done a little bit of everything 
um, touched live, touched se- series, uh, like online shows, and um, so. What's your favorite my own project that groups. you've been a part of in the last year? In the last year, um, probably what I was kind of an ongoing thing. Um, the last year, we I basically um, this is gonna be funny. So here's the story time. Basically, what happened was uh, my brother and I and my cousin so we were all is. gaming. <laughs> John knows the story. It's it's a great story. This is this is hilarious. I'm sorry, because <laughs> if I'm can I can I set this up just for a second? <laughs> Go ahead. I love this the already. I love you guys just for teaming. one little minuscule moment. <laughs> so Nick Trying is a very a dear friend of mine. We work together. He's a great person. I always love Nick. I always say, Nick, you're a young, vibrant beautiful young man you have all the potential in the world we're gonna go out and take it we have a discord server and his brother and him and three or four other people that i really love are always there and i'm like mm-hmm. i'm like i'm like three in the morning I'm like dude check this out i'm doing this composite i'm doing this video whatever and sure enough doesn't matter what time of day i see it mfs the him and his brother and PUBG or whatever <laughs> playing <laughs> video games and i'm like dude I'm thinking in my mind, you're wasting all your time, bro. You're just playing video games all the time. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're playing oh, video games. Oh, this is amazing games. already. <laughs> <laughs> this is my chance to uh, uh, prove John wrong. And yeah. uh, so, and this answers your question about networking too, actually. So basically, we're online gaming, and typically we're just kind of out. My brother and my cousin, we just play to have fun and just chill and it's like our social uh, activity as well. So we're online, we're playing around, we do different challenges that aren't, are not even close to the objective of the game. And we usually end up kind of, you know, pissing people off while we're playing, like people who are joining our team, right? Well, we get this guy that joins our group and we're playing and he's the most chill guy we've ever met and completely is fine with the way we're playing. In fact, he's almost exactly the same, super chill. He's like, hey, you guys want, you know, he's super like funny and we're being funny and we're laughing. And we're like, who is this guy? Like, he's so energetic and like actual, actually social um, on like through the game chat, um, talking. Like we're actually like hearing each other and talking. And as we're interacting, um, we, we just start connecting and, and talking and playing and we're getting to know him a little bit, but just a little bit, you know, he's still being very, um, you know, hidden about like who he is. And then he goes, um, he goes, you know, I feel like I really know you guys. And we're like, okay. You know? And he's like, um, he's like, you guys, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe who I am or what I, you know, what I do and my daughter and everything. And we're like, huh? <laughs> like, okay. Now, now we're like, who is this guy? Like, for all we know, we're like gaming with some famous streamer, you know, on Twitch or something. And we're, we're being strung along, you know? Um, and so as we're like playing with them, we're just, we're in our separate chat, right? Just us three on discord. And we're like, who is this guy? We're trying to guess. And he starts telling us about his daughter and how she races. Um, and she's one of the youngest NASCAR, uh, youngest women, young women to be signed in a NASCAR uh, in like a certain year. And we're like, whoa, okay. So now, but now we have something to Google, right? Us millennials. Get to work, get to work. Get to work, right? So we're, we're going on. We're trying to, we're starting to search every little thing. He, every detail he hints to us, we're searching it, right? And we're starting to narrow it down. We're like, you know, and, but we also want to know who he is, right? He's obviously the father. So we're trying to look for the father of this, you know, individual. And we find this video and we hear the voice and we're like, oh my God, like, this is the guy. That's his voice. This has got to be his daughter. And as we get to know them, so they, he starts to tell us this. He said, our story is really sad, but what we do is amazing. And he starts telling us about this drive for diabetes awareness that's their company, Drive for Diabetes Awareness Inc. Look them up, check them out. Um, it's a young lady who's the most professional young person I've ever met to date, who goes and drives all for her brother, who passed away of diabetic ketoacidosis oh, wow. at a very, very, very young age, about one or two. And when he passed away, their family went through a huge tragedy, 
and and challenges of, of that come with all of that but what came out what they decided to do with that is propel that you know the famous saying uh keep calm and carry on kind of thing mm-hmm. that's exactly what they did is they went through that experience and decided to do something good with it so they started a nonprofit organization for raising awareness and they did it through racing because that's something that they all love uh, cars and racing they're from florida and they that's like a big thing there and that's uh, she drives legend cars and so she's been doing that since she was super little and she does it now fully i mean she does not even commit herself to this is how committed they are to what their cause and it's amazing she races not even like a main circuit or trying to get you know first place she will go around and go she'll even like to travel the different states just so that she has a chance to set up their booth to race you know obviously when she's on the track she's trying to win of course she's got that yeah. energy and drive but she's doing it for her brother. She's doing it to raise awareness. And you should see her in action. And John and I had the chance um, so to, to lead up from we, – and we, we went from gaming with her dad to meeting with them, letting them know, hey, this is what we do. If you need help with anything, we love what you guys do. You're, you know, We just slowly learned about them, and we're like, we want to support whatever you need um, with it, within our means. Just tell us if you what you need, and we'll see if we can do it. And if we can't, that's fine, you know. And as we started doing that, we started coming with some ideas, and we're like, "Oh, well, we're, uh, one of our sponsors, um, who is the F3 driver, he is racing in Ohio. Why, why don't we meet there and actually meet in person?" So John and I got I got him involved, so and uh, we drove over to Ohio, and uh, we were able to shoot some stuff, got to meet him, and create some content for them. And now we're talking about doing a documentary. Um, about yeah so Here's, that's incredible that's amazing so, so that's, that's an example of like all from playing video games right video all games playing video games so video games john? so i i've shut up about the whole thing yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't <laughs> mentioned it ever since. yeah john opened up his own PUBG account <laughs> he's ready to started playing 12 hours a day <laughs> i mean who would have thought that you would build a relationship like that online it's it's very rare to happen but it can so uh, let's see. We got Marson says similar story to Mo Gadot, ex officer of Google X, turn passing death of his son to one billion happy. Hmm. Yeah. Very well said. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, that's incredible. Oh, and talk about like the biggest why mm-hmm. someone can have for what they do. This, it this... doesn't get bigger than no. that. Uh, it, and so now it's imagine. Unbelievable. Imagine approaching this person at a networking event and talking about you, you won't have a chance. ROI. He will he will he will approach you're you. Done. <laughs> like you're done. It means It's funny that the impression that. It means the nothing. impression that we made with him online like gaming how how do you portray yourself that someone trusts you enough to tell your them your story? something so deeply like, personal yeah yeah it's mm-hmm. super personal and he's like i don't normally do this guys but i feel like i can tell you that and it's interesting that he that that moment at that time when and, and these games are random right like yeah. like we got thrown with this guy and um he told us the story and we fell in love with it in a, in a way that he had no idea yet until we were like you know we messaged online and we're like Hey, give us your email and we'll email you and, and maybe, and hopefully, you know, and, and I think about a month or so went by and we finally, he uh, responded. He's like, yeah, let's just meet. And we just jumped down a video call. And then from there, just propelled like, yeah. I the thing about connection is it's more. like, <laughs> the, the thing about connection is it's like ripples in a pond. Sounds super mm-hmm. cheesy. I know, but like no, you are that initial drop. You are the one with that first initial mm-hmm. you know you, you could either decide not to drop into the pond and keep yeah. your brilliance and your ideas and your That's passions true. and whatever over there in the cup or you can drop you can take that risk you can meet new people you can introduce yourself for those of you who are a little bit nervous a little bit shy a little bit anxious about meeting new people i feel you i see you i'm with you but if you take that drop and you allow yourself to make those connections whether it's on video games or a live show or at a networking mm-hmm. event 
Yeah, yeah you're going to you're going to meet someone, you're going to make some movement. But imagine now just hearing that story, the ripples, the amount of people who are now yeah. going to hear that message because your voice, your mission has been amplified by the people that you have connected with. And so that is true. so I'm getting like chills. What a fantastic story. <laughs> and even at so higher levels, sharing. you may think that, oh, there's mm. no more connections to make. Dave Woodward is a perfect example that there's no end to the connections that could literally save your life. Dave mm -hmm. Woodward is the new CEO of ClickFunnels who took over in place of Russell Brunson. And he had some very serious health concerns. He was, I believe it was stage four cancer. And they didn't know what to do. It was essentially a death sentence. And Russell reached out to Tony Robbins, who he spent five or six years connecting and forming a relationship with before they finally became friends, reached out to him and said, do you know of anyone that can help my best friend? Someone that can save his life. Tony Robbins connected him with somebody that was an expert in this experimental phase science and put Dave into remission. Now he still has we some health you, issues. He still has some health issues like anyone in that position would be, but he's here. Yeah. He's here because of a connection made by somebody else and his connection to that person got him to something that literally could have been a lifesaver for him. So it's not just money. It's, it could literally save your life. And I love that story so much because it's it's not related to money. I mean, yes, he yeah. probably had to pay for this specialist, but he would have never known that person existed. Exactly. And he yeah. could have never gotten in without the recommendation from Tony. No. And I think Marley Jacks went through the same process as well. Yeah. She was dealing with yeah. some health Crispy issues. Crispy cancer. And is the and name just of put it out there into her world and said, hey, I'm dealing with some stuff. Does anyone know anything? Long shots, no. uh, anything. Give me any of your resources. And she was able to connect with people who have, I hope, saved her life. We, oh, we want absolutely. more Marley in the world. Absolutely. And we get more Marley because she asked for connection. Another perfect yes. example. Another perfect example. And if she'd always been approaching people about buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. Yeah. Do you think anyone would have responded to that message? And on no. top of that as well, she's we get so stuck in sharing our message about our business when it comes to content. Yeah. But when it comes to connecting, it's not just about, well, we talked about this last week, but it's not just about talking about your business. It's not just trying to sell to people, trying to yell at people. It's not just that. When you really want to connect with people from a content perspective, allow yourself to talk about things that are outside of your business you don't need to talk about your your personal life or your relationships or or your health conditions if that doesn't feel true to you but share those things share those thoughts share that snark you have share those those ideas and those dreams and those passions with people you see something funny post about it you see something you see a great quote post about it you will be amazed amazed when you create that piece of content that touches someone's life and they reach out to you to say hey i see you i feel you and then it turns out that they are the connection you have needed for your business in the first place crazy Amanda idea holmes was just talking about this the other day with me and she was saying that i think it was simon senek that she had been trying to get in touch with forever and ever yeah. and she just decided to spend three years passively addressing every one of his pieces of content nice. she became the one that gave the value add yeah so he knew nice. about her he knew that she was the one that always showed up and gave value to others to add on to what he already had and then they and saw each asked. other in an event never asked saw each other in an event and struck up a conversation once she identified herself as that person he immediately was warm and inviting and like, oh my God, thank you so much for everything you do. You're absolutely incredible in my group. And you add so much value and you make what I do, you start other conversations that then carries on and helps that content to really make an impact in someone's life because it lives on longer. And they started a conversation that ended up getting him or her on his show.
he interviewed her on his awesome. incredible podcast. And just this last week, she spoke on the same stage as Obama. Wow. Wow. Goals I'm not have saying to they're goal. connected. I'm not saying they're connected, but that method that she's using of yep. adding value first is what got her on that stage. And it works. It works. It works. I, well, I, I think it's time we it. wrap this puppy up. Well, I think John wanted to add. I didn't get a chance to tell my story about the networking at all. You guys ignored me. Oh, yeah. Sorry, John. Come on. Sorry. We we can't nix out John now. Come on. I'll I'll be okay. (laughs) Nobody puts John in the corner. You look so good. I got distracted. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you. You can stop that in about four weeks. Um, (laughs) Okay. So I think I learned it's all very similar to – to the, to the advice you guys have been giving, but I had like, I mean, it's literally yesterday, like the most amazing chain of events, learning probably the most interesting networking tactic I've heard full stop. It's just like, okay, cool. So this is, this is killing me. It's a good it all starts with watching Friday night live last fall. I meet these great, great people, Jim and Molly. Yeah. They're great people. It's amazing. Start connecting with them. They have this friend called Janaid. Janaid, who's a friend of the show, great Shout individual, out, huge, you know, love that man. We're good friends. Janaid invites me to a mastermind a week ago or two weeks ago, a guy named Chris Williams. He does his group coaching. He was having one of his customers. I go in, I don't know anybody. I'm like, and these people are all established, right? Like you were talking about, yeah. talk about imposter syndrome, right? Like, so like, I'm like, okay, but they're like, hey, nice backdrop. Cool. One of these guys who happened to be on the panel was a guy named Phil Paluccia, who happened to do the the launch for the HoloLens for Asia Microsoft. He saw that on my thing and he said, hey, you, you said you do AR? I said, yeah, man, that's what I do all day. Here, we should talk. He sends me his link, set up a conversation, talked to him yesterday. This guy has like unbelievable amount of exposure uh reach i mean he's got he sold yeah. pod I, I i can't even go into it all but he basically said to me he said the nucleus of it all is give give get give give get hey i know somebody i'm talking to somebody the first time maybe it's connecting somebody with somebody else who just needs to know give you're not you're not actually asking for anything but oh uh you have a need Oh yeah, I know so and so. You should talk to them. It isn't even about you, as we've all established already. And maybe you do that a couple of times. Maybe you do it for two years <laughs> with Simon Sinek. But the point is that give, give. When it t- comes time to get, it's stacking the deck in your favor for sure. Yeah. And so I was like, various themes, but it all kind of revolves around that you provide the value first. It had nothing to do, like the way we became connected or became friends was your contacts or what you want to call it, like networked. Yeah. Um, had nothing to do with my business. Had nothing. It was just like he saw this thing in my background. He goes, oh, you did that? I said, yeah, man, I do that. And finding that common common thread. And then I got a piece of advice yesterday that I fully intend to take to the market um, going forward. So, yeah. So. Anyways, you, you talked about networking. I did it yesterday, and that's what I learned. And so there you go. <laughs> I love that. I love Richard, that. go ahead. Oh, Painkiller. I see the painkiller got added in there. I like that. <laughs> is it Dr. Painkiller now? Well, what I'm suggesting Ooh. is people stop taking painkillers and become a painkiller. Ah, okay, okay. I see what you did there. I like that, Richard. Okay. I like that. But uh, a thread that Molly had, had started uh, – is there a benefit in knowing why someone leaves your uh, YouTube channel? And is, do you spend any effort trying to find out? No. So, and I say this because there's there's like a reality behind it. Um, when you have subscribers on your YouTube channel, or when you have a YouTube account, you have the ability <coughs> to, like you have privacy settings. So when you subscribe to a channel... Um, you have the ability for that channel to see your account or to not see your account. Mm. Um, so most, I've found that most people don't have, um, uh, don't allow the, the channel to see. 
So I can see my subscriber numbers going up or going down, but I actually don't know what subscriber is leaving um, because the the few that do have their usernames listed, um, they're they're the ones who aren't changing. Um, so I don't. Um, so, so it's not possible. It, it, not usually. Um, the other reality of it is those who do share their profiles. Um, the only way to get in touch with them is either to respond to a comment that they've left or to go to their profile, go to their e like go to their contact page or their about page, open up their email, copy their email, and then go into another window and email them and then hope that they open that email. Um, so it, it, it might work. It might not. Um, yeah. That's that's so it's not something that. you would try until you had, if you had 10 or 20,000 that you could put somebody's job as part of your job is to find out why they left. I mean, I, yeah. I throw that up because I yeah, it's easier on a think... lot of other platforms like Facebook um, to do things like that in Instagram. Uh, but with YouTube, it's it's just not as Too easy. Yeah. 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 My yeah. suggestion in that would be to just do content analytics and then scale yeah. off of the successes and burn the losers. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about that next week, actually. I'd love to talk about yeah. that, about the analytics of content. Um, oh, yeah. But I would, ra I would rather you, instead of reaching oh, out and oh. saying, why did you leave? Saying in a piece of content, what do you want to see more of? And then yeah. also looking at your analytics because they're telling you there yeah. in the analytics itself. So I would wow. say instead of doing that reach out, because like in sales, that can work sometimes where you just say, hey, you know, I saw that uh, you didn't buy Grant Cardone's 10X University. Uh, I just wanted to see why you didn't take advantage today. And some would be like, oh, you didn't have a payment plan. And they could save the sale because they go, oh, yeah. well, we do have a payment plan. Yeah. But in this instance of content, we just look at our analytics and we say, what do you want to see more of? What do you want? What have, how can we best serve you? in a way that we're not doing yet. And then you yeah. wait on the responses. The feedback is that response. Shareability. Just in a different way. Yeah. 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 I always look at my insights when it comes to shareability. If I know that my content is good enough for someone to be like, hey, you need to check this out, then I know that I'm on the right page in, in, in that regards. That's Only it. thing that I hate about Instagram is that they don't show you who saves and shares your stuff. It's a big mystery. <laughs> well, yeah, because like if you That's know funny. who shares your content, it's like yeah. they're just like hiding hot leads from you, you know? Exactly. Like True. it sucks. It sucks big ass. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, awesome. Yeah, I agree. So I mean that's that's it though. Is you you scale based upon your winners and you you burn the losers. That's it. And then yeah. you just keep going and trying and expanding upon what's winning. So if you release, as an example, a piece of content that's like the philosophy of funnel building and it it's a loser, but you did another one that was like uh, a case study with a successful funnel that made X amount of dollars and that one killed it. And it's not going to be like close. It's not going to be like one like versus three likes. Oh, I'm going to go to three likes. Like, it's going to be a difference. Yep. And you're going to see clearly, like, this is winning. So, okay, what is winning about that? So now I parse out the different parts of that title. The defined number. Uh, a case study of someone I worked with. Do they want to see more of what I can do? Trust. Is the trust a factor? They want to see more of that? Or do they want to see more results? ROI, investment. Where? How much am I going to get back? Is it a guarantee? You know, do they want to see more of that stuff? So now I parse that out and I make new pieces of content focusing on each part of that title. And I put out different content based upon that and I vary it up. Now I'm starting to like dig in. So, okay, they liked this one, this one, this one, and this one. Burn the losers. Okay, so now I'm starting to see this is what they want. You know, you're starting to gather what that audience wants from you. And but if you're looking to reach out to people individually, I wouldn't focus on trying to reach out and figure out the people who left. 
as much as I would try and reach out and figure out the people who are there. Yeah. If you like, if you literally want to have a, a virtual assistant or someone um, reach out to every new subscriber on your channel, it it's the same process. You have to go to their page, go to their about page, click on their email, copy it, write them an email, write them an individualized email and say like, hey, I checked out your channel. You might only have one video, but say something about the video, you know, common shared yeah. interests. Um, or if they have a substantial channel that's share talking a lot about, maybe you might even find people subscribing to your channel who are dealing with pain and they might be sharing that as a vlog on their channel, for example. Yeah. Just reach out to them, email them, find that point of connection if you can. It's not possible with a lot of people. A lot of channels have no videos. They just watch. Um, they don't produce. But... Um, spend the energy reaching out to them individually and ask them, like, what are you dealing with? How can I help? Like, is there any sort of like particular resources you're looking for, a certain challenge or obstacle you're dealing with? And then that way you end up creating content that is, is specifically relevant for that person. And it will also be relevant for other people who are in that same boat as them. And what I love about that is you're focusing on people when they're the most excited. They just joined. Yeah. You're focusing on positives as to where the yeah. other you're reaching out and saying, why are you leaving? It's negative. Are you going to yeah. say something negative? Ah, as yeah. opposed to like when they're excited and they're like, what are you excited about when you what were you excited about when you joined this group? Yeah. What brought you in? What is the thing that you would love to see that would make this worth your while? Mm -hmm. Now, that's the positive at the beginning, as opposed to chasing after them like a bill collector for info. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I can even share like my last, like the last four like reels that I did, if we're talking about like analytics and stuff. I mean, this is, this is, so cr this is literally crazy on what works and what doesn't work. And I'll read, and I'll read you the, the views on the last four, 291, 191, 228, 4,177. So not much yeah. of a difference there at all. A small difference. <laughs> Audience isn't minutes. telling you anything. That sucks. Man. You know, it was like, it was like it was, I went from one to three. Yeah. No, I'm he, sorry, uh, you're not getting views. He offered everybody fifty trillion dollars for that. Apparently, I know. <laughs> you get fifty trillion. He you bought get votes. 50 trillion. He bought the votes. <laughs> Don't ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It shocked me. Like, like, like it shocked me because literally, I was like, uh, you know, I'm posting consistently, and all of a sudden, it's just like, oh everything is kind of like like i look at i look at numbers like as long as as long as they're consistent numbers i'm happy with that like if it's like 100 views but it's like 100 to 150 views for example across the board then i'm like cool my page at least looks even but yeah. when you have like 10 and then all of a sudden it's like 3000 and then it's like what it looks it looks funny but um you 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 really just got to play on uh, consistency and maybe my last one because i did a commercial for a um uh for a ballet studio uh it probably got the attention of a lot of dudes <laughs> <laughs> okay that's where you're going <laughs> all those rewatches right so and, and the number and the numbers too you also have to understand that people have lives they go on vacation they they do yeah. things so it's like don't stop creating just because the numbers are down you know mm -hmm. august was terrible but people typically go on vacations in august they yeah. don't they're not on their computers they're not looking at stuff but then all of a yeah. sudden back to school season comes and it's like boom, five thousand ten thousand a hundred thousand views yeah. right and then christmas time comes around and it's back to oh my god i only have a hundred likes what, what's going on because which is a... funny because if you're in a different niche and you're serving like young people like students those terms are flipped summer yes. vacation views go through the roof uh, yep. because kids are now able to be on their phones more often sure. you see the same thing at christmas break at thanksgiving breaks at spring breaks you see so much more content outside of the school year i love it yeah. i love it yeah yeah i think that's a great thing to end on is that the consistency of it you don't stop yeah. because it's not skyrocketing you're not getting the direct results consistency is the reason you know it's, they, they say uh it took me five years to become an overnight success yes <laughs> yeah yeah but if they you know like bands for instance 
But what would happen if they only played one show, no one showed up, and they bagged it? Yeah. Of course you haven't gotten any fans. Yeah. You sat on your can. You didn't play the, the guitar anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Like, you got to yeah. give people stuff to look at. So that way, when they come into your world, what do they do? They're going to do a little bit of a deep dive to check you out. Yeah, yeah never That's delete anything saying. either. Always, yeah. like, keep keep everything. Because even now, even now with, with how, like, Instagram's new algorithm with the whole, like, like, views and watch time matter more. You know, you can have a real tank today and all of a sudden, three weeks from now, I can have 100,000 views. Yeah. Absolutely. right yep. so you don't ever want to disrupt because everybody has like their own like hidden personal algorithm so you never want to disrupt your algorithm so never delete anything because then it like yep. throws things off and it's like oh i'm out of sequence now i don't know i don't know what's going on right yep. uh and then and then it also shows like a red flag like oh this individual's deleting stuff right yeah so even if it tanks, if it bombs, who cares? Leave it up. It's it, doing something is better than not doing anything at all. Yeah. Now, like Marley Jax does a lot of analytics on uh, YouTube channels in particular. And she noted that people that post on a consistent weekly basis, it takes them about three months before the algorithm gives them a shot. Yep. 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 But it's also so that, that's for you to get a shot. Yeah. That a little bit of a little poof of of push to your channel that's yeah. how long it takes youtube to say oh okay you're not going to disappear yeah let's give you a shot yeah and it's sad because at the four month mark is typically when people fall off yeah yeah right you because know that, that, they're the just... terminology what is it a, a foot from gold 12 inches from, what, what is the term for that <laughs> something like that i don't i don't i don't know it completely but it's yeah. it's and, and and i've noticed it in my in, in my own business and that's why I even changed my curriculum from three months to six months for that reason, sure. because hmm. I'm noticing that I'm building a lot of dead pages, mm. right? Yeah. I'm building, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting everybody the sweet spot. And then all of a sudden when it's like, okay, cool. I think I'm all right. I think I'm going to do this on my own. Now you never do it on your own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, it just, it yeah. just plummets. It just plummets, and it's and it sucks. So I kind of changed that. I kind of changed that way, and I was like, no, because month four is where the true magic happens. You just <laughs> gotta let trust the process. And honestly, from what I've seen of you and of TikTok, in some cases, it doesn't even take that long. Short form content is being pushed so hard right now, mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. people are just thirsty for it. Like they want it so badly. And they're just cranking through content. So, of course, they're going to push it out to more people and say, do you like it? Oh, you don't like it. Okay. And then what about this? This? You like it? <laughs> yeah. They're just yeah. constantly like, not that one? All right. No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. That one? That's exactly how but it is. It's just fast. So we're just churning through content faster than we ever have before. And because of that, I feel like the algorithms are pushing it up a little more. You, you thought it was an algorithm change, but it was actually Jim. Like, no, no, no. Yeah. No, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so like, that's my day there, job. Like, you, that's my day this job. One? No. <laughs> nope. Okay, okay, how about this one? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you just have like a box of flashcards. That's it. Yeah, that's it. This one? No. This one? no. Uh, that plays to my favorite saying: "Never, don't fear failure. Fear apathy. Fear never doing anything." I love yes. oh, man. Well said. That's and good. another thing, I, I follow this one guy on TikTok. Uh, I don't remember his channel name right now, but the one cool thing that he does is just he daily, I guess he like daily short form vlogs his whole entire business. Oh, that's really cool. Like, cool. like, like, like he even right now that you is don't like, have his name, you turd. Sorry, here. Okay. No plug. I, honestly, I don't. I don't follow that many people on TikTok. I can post it in the group. This. I could probably find this in a second. All right. Yeah, post <laughs> it in the comments in the live. We need to wrap this up because people got lives, baby. Yeah. So Molly, close this out. Oh man, we okay, got my friends. Next well, week? next week is a huge milestone for Friday Night Alive. 
uh, and we want you all to join us. So join us for our regular time, 8 p.m. Eastern here, either in the Visibility Hackers group, that is the best place to be, um, or you can join us on the Visibility Hackers YouTube channel as well. But do me a favor, my friends, and make sure that you, if you're watching us on Facebook, that you've connected your Facebook account to StreamYard so that when you have your questions and your comments and your celebrations and your shout outs, um, when we bring your comments up on the screen, it'll have your name on them and it won't just say Facebook user because we want to shout you out. We want to celebrate you. We want to cheer on all of the incredible things that have happened in the last year. Um, because Friday Night Live is just just shy of a year old. It'll be just after Funnel Hacking Live, um, but we're gonna we're gonna do an early. We're gonna have a long extended birthday party. It might be a few weeks long. Like That's okay. We're gonna get extra with it, <laughs> <laughs> as the kids say. As the kids <laughs> say. So let's let's uh, let's all do a, a a big wave. Let's all let's all wave wave goodbye. Wave good night, everyone. Remember, we love you. Be excellent to each other and in just honor go of live. the queen. Rest in peace. Oh, rest mm. in peace. Go live. Your people are out there, and I promise you, they are waiting for you. Great job out tonight, everyone. <laughs>